Jack. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how long have you been a trainer and what inspired you to get into the whole boxing thing? Um, been a trainer, this is my 23rd year, actually. Um, we've had our gym for 23 years. Um, what inspired me to get get into training boxers because I was tired of getting hit in the face. You know, um, there just becomes that time when you know you got to go on the other side of the fence. Um, and as I preach into my guys, the discipline and the dedication you got to put into boxing, if you're not willing to put that in yourself, you know, then I knew it was time to move on. And, uh, and I wasn't willing to put that dedication into what it was to be a good boxer. I mean, I think I had the skills and I know I had the toughness, but I didn't have the dedication. I think that's why I'm so hard on my guys now. You okay. know, I, I know what it takes to, to succeed. I've been to the top of the mountain, you know, and it takes 100% dedication. So, so, so that's kind of what got me going that direction. Okay. Personally, I never even asked you, what kind, of a, what kind of a boxing career did you have? Like, what did you... I had 18 what? amateur fights. Okay. Um, and I only lost one. I actually, I lost my first one, got the shit kicked out of me. Yeah. You know, and yeah. um, I, I lost that fight, and uh, and actually after I, I, I won my like 18th or 19th fight, I actually, back in the day, there was a lot of these small-time guys around here that were turning all these kids pro, um, and I had a group of guys from um, Gerard that wanted to turn me pro, and um, I signed the contract and everything, and you know, actually I went home and I was like, what the hell are you doing? I totally you know agree. I mean? I mean, you're just not, you know, what are you, what are you thinking? You're just not ready for that, you know, and I'm glad I made that decision, because I wasn't. So you would agree then, I, I've always said this, I told this to you, Max, I've said this before, just because you're a great fighter doesn't necessarily mean you have the skills to be, just walk in and be a trainer. Uh, Two totally different... Absolutely. You know, okay. I mean, I've seen a lot of, you know, some of the best football coaches were non-football players. Absolutely. You know, look at Lou Holtz. I mean, I can't see him ever being a great football player. I mean, he's a midget. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? But he's a great coach, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of great coaches out there that was never that great in the sport, okay. you know? And I'll never claim to be great in boxing. I was just a, a tough kid, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. It had nothing to do with skills, that's for damn sure, you All know? Right. Uh, and I think when people realize that level where you're at, and I think that makes it a lot easier on decisions. Sure. Well, let me ask you this. As far as training goes, um, you've seen them all, amateurs and pros in your time. Like, what is the real difference between an amateur and a pro? Um, as far as how you train them, and then I guess at what point, you know, aside from the training regimen, at what point do you look at a fighter and say, uh, you know, obviously you have great intuition, we all know that. At what point do you look at a fighter and just say, you know what, I, I honestly think he has what it takes to, to go to the pro level, or is that something the fighter determines? Well, I mean, as far as the difference in there is, I mean, the difference only comes when I think when, when, when they uh, increase their rounds. I mean, you get kids coming out of the amateur like Marco Hall, pretty much still trains like an amateur does you know he's only fighting four round fights right now I mean, so that's what you train for and when you're training for I mean amateurs fight four round fights yeah. you know so so the difference there is I think as they increase their rounds you know you increase not only their training regimen you know everything gets longer and more physical yeah you know yeah. Um, what was the other part of that question oh just how do you train <laughs> Okay, when they're ready to make the move. Yeah, when you're training an amateur fighter and you're training a pro fighter, is the training pretty much the same, just aside from maybe the level of endurance? Or yeah, well, it's the, the amount of rounds they're going to go. And that's what I was talking okay. about there, you know, okay. round and round. And as far as when they're ready to turn pro, um, you know, I, I think it's a matter of when they run out of what they can do in amateurs. Yeah. You know, um, you know, you can get a kid that, and there's been a, a bunch of them. Ricardo Williams, one of the greatest amateurs of all time. Mm -hmm. I don't think he was ever ready to turn pro because he kept him amateur too long. Yeah. He just mastered amateur, you know, system so well he never was able to get out of it. Uh, Juan McPherson out of Cleveland, same exact way. You got these kids that have three, four, five hundred amateur fights. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think after 30, 40, 50 fights, I think you could see the direction the kids going. You know, and. Um, you know, then it's an age factor also. You know, Popo is going to fall into that category. Do we wait till next the next four years for the Olympics? My question, my answer to that is, you know, we see how he's doing when he's like 18 and a half, 18 years old. Yeah. If he's starting to win some of these major tournaments or even do good in these major tournaments or if he's one of the top five or six amateurs in the country at his weight class, um, Financial-wise, I think it would be crazy for him to turn pro because you're looking at a difference of maybe a zero signing bonus and zero monthly salary and uh, struggling to get a promoter. they got to believe in him versus being one of the top elite amateurs in the country and you could write your ticket. Yeah. You know, yeah. And again, I've been there with Kelly and I've seen what the difference is when you come out 
just going to the Olympic trials. Kelly didn't win it. You know, he just went to the Olympic trials. Yeah. And every kid on the Olympic trials that year got buku money for signing bonuses, wow. you know, monthly salaries, and he signed with a major promoter. You know, the key in going professional is can you get a major promoter? You know, without a promoter, you struggle. Yeah. You know, you fight all local fights. You make a hundred bucks a round. You know what I mean? And it's tough. Jake Derisio, he's fought, what, 12 fights here in Youngstown, Ohio. He's got 14 fights. You know, every fight's got to be in Youngstown. You know, the yeah. key is to move in a kid around is get him all around the country. Yeah, yeah. And let, it's not so much of letting the people see him. It's like all the different reporters out there. Those are yeah. the ones that have to write about him. Yeah. And that's what you want them to see. You know, you want to get him on the undercard of an Oscar De La Hoya like Kelly did. Yes. You know, might have been only 10 people in the stands watching Kelly's fight, but there was 100 reporters there. Yeah. You know, and that's the key. That's the key to make your kid successful. Okay. Are there any characteristics... Uh, that you see early on when a kid steps into the gym for the first time, um, you know, much like Kelly did when he was a kid, or tons of other kids come in. You know, what I mean, are there any characteristics that you kind of see early on um, that you kind of look at and just say you think, you know, even if he's not going to become the next world champion, yeah. that you just look at him and say he's going to be a phenomenal fighter. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know, it's just like the kid when you go to football practice and you take a little nine-year-old kid and there's the other kid on the field that stands out above everybody. Sure. You know, cocking the shoulder back, throwing the football the right way. The kid on the Little League baseball field that does everything right, yeah. taps his shoes with the bat. You know, he looks like a professional. True. Yeah. That's a big step in, 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 in that advancement. Um, but I've also been fooled by that, yeah. you know, in both ways. Because when Kelly walked in the gym, he couldn't walk and chew bubble gum. <laughs> well, he really couldn't. He was just I a, actually vaguely remember. Yeah, I was like he was 19. Just a, yeah, for, yeah, he was yeah. just a gangly, a bigger, white, gangly white kid yeah. that would spar feet, with everybody. Hands and kind of spar with everybody. Tough as nails. Get yeah. beat up every day. Go home. Could care less. Come back and spar the next day. Yeah. You know that's how that's how Kelly was. But I mean, his toughness kind of grew into. He became a nice little boxer. Yeah. And then you know you know the rest of the story. But uh, yeah. that's that's how that played out. So I've been fooled by some of them too. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Uh, this wasn't on the skip, but I'm just going to ask you. What's your take on, you know, with MMA today? A lot of us, you know, they're two totally different breeds of people, obviously. But what do you think the impact is on having, like, you know, this MMA stuff versus boxing and all this type of stuff? What kind of an impact? When you were talking about promoters, how it's hard to get a good promoter, you know, for these young guys that are up and coming. What, um, what kind of an impact do you think this MMA uh, scene is having on the boxing scene? At first, I thought they were killing us. And I'm going to be honest with you, I, I, I think Kelly, in Kelly's little era there, mm -hmm. had a whole lot to do with turning that around because that's right when, um, you know, the UFC and everything was getting big, yeah. you know, um, 207, 206 in that area. I mean, they were starting to do large venues and the big names and I mean, there were, and, and boxing was going this way. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, you, 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 it was almost demanded that the promoters start putting the best against the best. And, and that was the only thing that was going to save us. Whether it's two in-house fighters from top rank or not, you still have to have a good fight. Yeah. You have to put two good fighters against each other. You know, you couldn't keep putting Winky right on TV against whomever. You know, you just couldn't keep putting those boring fights on TV. You're yeah. putting people to sleep. When you got guys going in an MMA, picking themselves up, slamming, kicking, yeah. Yeah. elbowing, yeah. blood flying out. People love that shit. Yeah. You know, women... Women is the biggest at the UF, <laughs> UFC. It's it was a oh, yeah. I was amazed at how many women go to these things and they love it. So do you think boxing is actually starting to regain its? I think we will. Again, it's I think we. I think we've we've got over that hump the last couple of years. Good I don't deal. even think it's an issue no more. Um, okay. You know, you got to understand. There's only one really major promoter in UFC, and that's Dana White. Yeah, and, that's true. And, and and he's just wears the hell out of these guys. You know, they fight each other in it week in week out. You know, everybody's fighting each other and. And eventually you're going to see everybody getting tired of that too. The same people fighting each other. And, and that's it's, you know, yeah. it's, it's what happened in boxing. So then he'll have to change his format. Okay. Well, while we're on the topic then of promoters and stuff like that, um, so Popo or any other fighter out of your gym, um, you know, obviously Youngstown known, we just have tough fighters here. We all know that. You know I mean? We get some badasses out of this town. So what do you, do you see anybody else like, you know, if you were to make a, uh, so is, is there anybody else that you see on the up and coming that you actually have a feeling that may be... Danny Williams will be a world champ. Okay. The kid we train here, Danny Williams fights at 135 pounds. He fights Hank Lundy March 30th. Um, and from what I understand, the winner of that fight is going to get an eliminator bout. Oh, wow. So, you know, Danny's a fight away from fighting for a world title. Fight or two away from fighting for a world title. And Danny's a huge puncher. And that's, to his, you know, Good Hank deal. Lundy gets hit a lot. Okay. Well, over to your event then that you have uh, coming up here in Camel. Um, let's talk about your fighter, Popo. Who? Popo. Oh, I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you know that guy, I think he had like 70 fights or something, yeah. you know, it's supposed to be like the main event of the night. Yeah, you know what, he's um, he's a phenomenal young kid, mm -hmm. um, 
And when I say that, when I say young, you know, it's, he is young. You know, he's young at the sport. It's his first year in the open turn, open division. I mean, just turned 17 years old in, in um, January, and uh, he won his first national championship. It has uh, about 70 fights. Um, is that about right? Yeah, I think he's right? like 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 60 some fights. Yeah. Wow. I can actually give you his exact record. He's only got 11 losses old. and like 50 some wins. 58 and 11. 58 and 11. Yes, you're right. He's called me. He's 58 and 11. You're right. That's phenomenal. <laughs> I guess more than 60. What do you What do you think about <laughs> Popo going pro in the future? What oh, you? there's no doubt. I mean, he's yeah. he's definitely a, a pro fighter. He has that pro style, and that's what I said. I mean, you know, he wants to turn pro when he turns 18. You know, um, and that's just you know that, and maybe he will. Maybe we will. Mm-hmm. You know, but the thing of it is, you know, I, I, financially, I want to look out what's best for him. Sure. You know, and um, if I don't have any promoters interested in him, and and and, and we got to turn pro on our own, I just think it's 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 a, a waste of talent. Okay. You know, um, and I would try to encourage him. Let's just try this amateurs. Let's try to win a national tournament. Um, you know, I'm going to put him in every major tournament there is for the next year here, and all of two two thirteen. Mm-hmm. We're going to put him in every major tournament there is. Okay. Do you have do you have about three or four fighters? If you had to give us the names of three or four fighters out of this gym, that you really have a, a gut feeling that it's it's really going somewhere. Could you give us those names? Well, without a doubt, Danny Williams. Okay. Uh, Willie Nelson. He's a freak of nature. I mean, he's six foot four. He fights one forty seven with no problem. You six know, he, four. Yeah, he's seventeen one and one. Um, he was number two amateur in the world, number one amateur in the United States. Um, Willie has a bright future in front of him, and then without a doubt, Popple. I mean, are they are they long term residents of Youngstown, Ohio? They no, no no. Willie lived in Cleveland. He now okay. moved here and trains with us. And Danny is actually from St. Louis, which moved up here and now trains with us. Great. Danny's been here for a couple years now, um, okay. and without a doubt, without a doubt, Popple. I mean, he's probably one of the most talented 16, 17 year old kids I ever had in the gym, uh, wow. including Kelly. You know, Kelly wasn't that talented versus mm-hmm. that tough. Sure. You know, Popple punches. He could box. You know, got that Oscar De La Hoya look. Yeah. You know, and, and it means a lot. Good, Jack. Huh? He don't look that good, Jack. <laughs> Man, once he gets some money, under, once he gets some money under his yeah, belt. Yeah, once you get money, now that's when you start looking real quick. Real good. Oh, we all look good with <laughs> yeah. money in our pocket. Yeah, you always look a little better when you <laughs> yeah. got a when you got a little yeah. bankroll. <laughs> well, let's talk about this uh, the next this event that you got coming up, and and let's talk about some other future amateur shows that you guys are planning on holding because we want to promote them. Uh, we're gonna promote them nonstop on the website for nothing. We just wanna. You know, get some attention to all the all these amateur fighters. You know what I mean, and uh, get them some publicity that they deserve. Yeah, we're just gonna cool. keep we're just gonna keep pumping it. So right now we have the amateur Ohio versus Canada show coming up. Right. Um, what's the date on that one again? Uh, Saturday the fourth. Okay. Um, you know, I teamed up with Tommy and uh, Mike Safaldi from Lights Out Promotion. What a mistake! No, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? And uh, and I'm glad I did. It's a, you know it took a lot of load off my back. We all been working together. Um, you know, it's tough when I probably put on a couple hundred shows myself sure. when you go to do it with a partner because I'm a control freak and I've ran some very successful shows yeah. and, uh, you know, it's just, it, it, that was the only tough part, yeah. you know, having to call everybody and, and not get permission, but you got to share it with your partners, you know what I mean? And I, like I said, I've never thought in a million years that I'd be on the phone with Mike Safaldi every day for the last two months. <laughs> Well, how's he going to be with you, baby? I was going to say, how's he on the phone when he's on the phone with you, too? Yeah. yeah. How's he oh, working yeah. at? You know, it's... it's calls but, uh, about six times each yeah. a day. Oh, goodness. But it's, uh, you know, no, it's it, it, it's it's going to be a good show. Uh, it's the first time you bring a team in from Canada or from out of the country. And uh, we run through some hoops there. You know, we went through the little ringers and... That was tough, but we got it done. Uh, we got some great bouts lined up. You know, not just Popple. He's the main event. Popple's fighting a kid from Canada that's 19-2. and two with uh, He was the Canadian National Open champion. You know, so he'll be representing uh, Canada and their nationals and, and for their right to go to the Olympics. You know, um, so uh, all the kids on the bouts have all tough fights. And uh, everybody's matched up tough. Uh, wow. were, I, I couldn't get away with matching. So you weren't <laughs> you just giving anybody wins? No, 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 okay. no. You know, I got a kid in my gym with zero fights fighting a kid with six fights. Wow. You know, and I don't know wow. what, how to outcome. And I feel bad because this kid sold like 20 tickets. You know, <laughs> young kid sells all these tickets in his first fights. He's got to go in there and fight a kid with five or six fights. And, wow. You know, but, you know, that's just how that, that, how that goes, amateur boxing. Okay, after this event right here, what do you guys have? In, is there going to be a pro show in town coming up soon? Or uh, I have no idea about okay. pro show. So, um, you know, um, anytime these guys want to help you know, work on a show with me, I'd be more than happy to do it again. Okay. Um, you know, I was offered three shows down at the Cavelli Center next year in the summer, over the summer months. Uh, when Kelly and I did a show, the outdoor show we did, it was a really big success. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Eric Ryan down there, they want to partner up with us and do three outdoor shows. So, you know, I, I, I know for sure I'm going to do some shows over the summer. Probably do one right before the summer, you know. Um, 
and then we'll go from there. Okay. Well, Jack, I thank you very much for your time. It's a pleasure seeing you. Thank and, you, uh, guys. We're going to do this again soon. We're going to stop down at the gym occasionally and talk to your guys. Absolutely. We're just going to pop in and, and interview you guys as it goes along. But thank you very much for your time, buddy. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.